Pren here with another deep dive build video. This will be for the legendary scimitar Intel Dreadnought Warbird. Uh, let's head to space and get some stats. So this build, it's not my primary build. It is fun to use, especially in a team setting. Um, I use uh, some command stuff and uh, to be honest, it's a bit too big and slow to really do anything with 1v1s with your typical uh, pvp -er. so i try and reserve this just for you know every now and then fun v's and stuff like that but all right let's move off to a little bit of a distance so we don't get affected by anyone's uh clickies all right all right so there she is in baul black my favorite all right Let's dive into this. So this ship, I haven't, I rarely, rarely die in this. And th to be honest, this ship is going to exploit the heck out of this game. Um, between the the stealth and the intel and all that stuff, it's just, it's a huge exploit. And you'll see that there's not a whole bunch of healing on this. It actually was just reworked to do a bit more damage. All right, let's dive right in. All right, so... Obviously, I'm a big fan of Plasma. Um, there are other loadouts. I mean, again, when it comes to your weapons, really all you care about is your uh, secondary procs. Um, you know, I love bringing down resistance ratings. That is the key, in my opinion, to PvP, bringing down resistance ratings. So we have some uh, corrosive plasma beams on here. We also have two of the Omnis for ultimate and... Uh, yeah, these also bring down, I think, kinetic? Yeah, kinetic and plasma. So, yeah, we're running our three-piece uh, isolytic set, you know, just like uh, the last ship I posted up. All right, a great set to have. That three-piece three bonus is really, really good. It gives some really good uh, damage resist, and the hull pen, it, it's, that's what it's all about, right? Obviously, we're running a uh, piezo weapon. Always want to be running one of these for that uh, hidden proc technical overload. So this has a couple extra device slots. This is T6X, um, so it has one extra slot in it. Um, I just slot the Kobayashi Maru. It, it is nice, but I, I don't really, I, I haven't dived into actually seeing if this thing is, you know, really helping out that much, but it is there. Um, it is there for the team too, so it's kind of cool. Uh, batteries, I I typically again during fun V's I won't run the lithium batteries um, unless I forgot to create some and that's all I have. Uh, they're expensive. I I tend to lean away from that kind of stuff. Uh, deuterium surplus is a must-have on this. It is slow. It is slow turning, slow moving. Just everything about this. And when you try and catch Kitty, it's yeah, good luck. You're, you're not catching him in this. Um, our loadouts are pretty much the same aside from our Singularity, which differs with Romulan ships. But this does give us the uh, whole regen bonus that we're looking for in the set. 120% right there. Really good to have. Our hangar, I, I flip-flop a little bit, but I have found that the Elite Rom drones, um, Elite Romulan drones... Uh, they typically, they hit pretty hard, actually. I mean, and we'll see with the skills and everything else, traits, stuff like that. We're giving huge boosts to these guys, and they are doing, it's like having another, you know, player with you. I mean, obviously not meta player, but it, it's still very nice to have. Um, I have tried these Elite Yukawa frigates. I, I hope I pronounced that right. I really, uh, that subnuclear carrier wave really got me, and uh, I thought, oh wow, more subnuking, that would be awesome. It never happens. It never happens. It, I mean, it might happen for them, and it only affects them, but um, I haven't actually seen it happen. I have visually looked for it to, you know, actually proc, and I have yet to see it. So, who knows, it might be broken. I mean, invalid entity, all that good stuff. But yeah, these Elite Romulan drones, I found that they're a really, really good fit for this build. So, um, obviously, Elite drones, uh, Fleet Starbase, I'm sure most of you know that. 
Um, and it's a typical PvP loadout. I mean, there's really nothing, you know, special about these consoles. These are all typical PvP consoles. Um, the whole image refractors, I might swap out every now and then. Um, I don't really need them. I might actually, in the future, swap out for something that um, goes towards control or uh, crit severity, something like that. But, yeah. Uh, we're running for the protomatter matrix infusers all plasma all that good stuff. You guys know what these do um, You know lots of healing Not that this ship really needs it, but in between placates and you know cloakies and all that good stuff. They do come in handy All right moving on. We'll just check out some stats got a decent accuracy rating I'd, I'd like it to be a little bit higher um, obviously Anything over a hundred will get you into the arena, but you want to be right around 140 or 160. Um, that's really where you're going to shine the most. Um, our crit severity is really up there. I like that. Our crit chance I could care less about, and we'll see with the uh, Bozeman trait and all that. Oh, I did not mean to do that. All right. Uh, it does have some decent, um, you know, unlocks for the mastery, all that good stuff. Um, I'm not too worried about that. Let's go into our stations. All right, so this is it, guys. Um, now, because we're running certain traits, we are going to focus and we are going to utilize every intel slot possible. Um, I mean, going down here, you know, this command station, I mean, I'd much rather have the, um, the engineer cranking out stuff. Uh, I might change it. I'm not sure. I mean, I have the doffs for the boosts and all that stuff, but I, I don't know. This seems to work for me. Let's start with Mr. Potato Head up here. Obviously, you know, I'm, I'm going to try and do a video on doffs um, going into their traits because their traits really do make a difference, a notable, noticeable difference. Um, but that'll, that'll be later on. All right, so science team obviously must have, you can't, you can't not have this. You need this. If you don't have this, best of luck. Uh, we are running Exodus. Yes, I know. Exodus. Yes, so Exodus will trigger whenever we have any intel or jams targeting sensors. And I want that to be procking a lot. Um, I'm kind of moving away from it from this build. I don't think I need that 500 uh, stealth and all that, but we'll see. So jam targeting sensors, it's really great to have. Uh, photonic officer if you're running this you're going to always have something to click um, especially on this build everything is refreshing each other and so many things are tied in this just really complements overall everything else um, our tactical this is a surgical strike build so we're not going into beam overload or anything like that I threw some chemo site laced weaponry um, it just Damage resistance rating goes down. You, know, you guys know I'm a big, big fan of that. Uh, Delta, attack power and Delta, it's really good. I'm not really a big fan of Delta 1. Uh, if anything, you want this 3. But, I mean, we're working with what we ha you know, have to work with. So, uh, damage resistance rating is awesome. All that good stuff. Uh, gives some stealth there, which is kind of cool. Um, our engineers over here, engineer team one, again, just like science team, you need this. Don't not equip this. You need this. All right. Uh, going into this, this ties in emergency powered engines. This ties into our DOF, which recharges our evasive maneuvers. This all ties together. Um, having evasive maneuvers, when you proc in everything, then you click on emergency powered engines with the DOF. That timer gets drastically reduced, drastically reduced. So, I mean, it's it's really good to have, especially for this. You constantly want to be moving as fast as possible, having the highest turn rate. Um, I find that it's very difficult to, you know, stay on target as far as lining the ship up. Thankfully, it's not just a, you know, 5 and 1 weapon loadout, uh, 5 aft, or 5, 4, 1 aft. Uh, Ox to Sif, uh, this ties into a DOF. It gives a you know a bit of hit points, all that good stuff, which is good. But I'm mainly only clicking this just for the placate. 
aux to uh, or emergency power to aux this is really really important for pvp um especially with all the cloaky builds all that good stuff you're going to gain some perception and yeah you definitely want that control expertise it's just all around it really really it ties everything in here going to our intel obviously intel one to two we are going to exploit the heck out of the stealth in this game again i i mean i'm not really a big fan of exploiting the game but we're dealing with invalid entity here i mean cryptic you know we're we're just muddling through it so so yeah there's a stack of this obviously you know they share a cooldown but it's not the same cooldown so one cools down for 30 seconds the other goes into cooldown for 15 seconds something like that evade target lock etl this is awesome to have if you actually are taking damage somebody gets in range this is a hard clicky for me um i love having this and to complete this surgical strikes three now i found you know that running any build that surgical strikes you need it to be surgical strikes three there's no if and buts are about it it's just like beam overload it needs to be three um, so we're definitely utilizing that here and again we're just we want all the intel possible this goes towards the trait temporal surge which uh, has a two minute cooldown base cooldown and every time you click any intel ability it drops the cooldown so i mean these things going off all the time you know you hit temporal surge 15 seconds 20 seconds later you have temporal surge again which, if you don't know what it is, I'll explain it when we get to the skills. Awesome to have. All right, uh, let's get out of here, go into our skills. We'll start with specializations. Again, this is more of a team ship, so I like to run command. I also like to run command because of the clicky it gives. Let's go down and find that. Oh, right there, boost morale. This is awesome. It goes towards your entire team. It removes all debuffs and control effects for four seconds with only a one minute cooldown, which is nice. One minute cooldown is not too bad for something like that. Um, I really like it because it applies to the entire team. So, I mean, if you're on a you know really good team, like you're you're about to go into like a uh, actual you know PVP event kind of thing, uh, you guys should probably look into running command. Everyone should be looking into running command, uh, rather. I mean, primary. I would just drop it there and just say that should be the primary. All right. Uh, next up, Intel Officer is number two. We don't care about three and four because we're not getting that. But as I said in my last build, we are going to fly this ship in auxiliary mode, which if we do, we get all this stuff right here. It's really awesome to have. Um, goes towards the stealth, perception, everything else. It's just, it is the meta that it it's pretty much a staple in any of my builds. Um, Intel team or Intel officer is always number two. I usually swap from strategist, command officer, and miracle worker. Miracle worker is a little bit broken, I think, still. But yeah. All right, moving on. Do do do. Let's go to our skills. All right, so we'll just start with personal traits. It's typical PVP loadout. Um, nothing crazy here. Uh, Boimler effect, definitely awesome to have. This is the entire Oxbad build, all in one nice little trait. Um, get this, it's worth it. It's low B, I know, but it's worth it. Trust me. Um, intelligent Agent Attaché. So I'm a science player, all right? I rely a lot on Sensor Scan and Subnuke for almost every, all my builds. Um, this gives you the chance to be able to restore stuff to that. All right, so I, I got to calculate it out. It is a significant uh, drop in the cooldown. Um, guys, it's it's really worth it. I would definitely look into it at minimum. Since we are running a hangar pet, we have this right here, independent wingmate. This is awesome to have. This is what makes that um, that hangar pet, the first one that's deployed at least, like having another player next to you. Um, huge bonus to damage and its resistance ratings. Um, as soon as it dies, you know, you, the next one gets it as you deploy more. Going up to our space traits. All right. So we have calculated broadside. Now, 
guys, I get it. This is a more of an end game build, all right? As far as these traits, you know, you need chips to get these. It's a, you know, kind of a no-brainer. You can replace these with other ones. You know, just try and stay in tune to, you know, always try and double up your duty officers or your consoles, whatever you're trying to do. You know, try and maximize the space, the, you know, that's occupied. Um, this is awesome for the uh, beam damage, all that good stuff. Um, yeah, it, anytime you activate bridge or Intel bridge officer abilities, you get this. We're running four Intel abilities. I mean, it's it's going to be proccing damn near constantly. Uh, since I had good fortune, you do have to be careful with this trait if you are one v oneing. I don't suggest doing it in a scimitar. Uh, not for your typical PvP match, but if you are going against another science player or a science-heavy team, um, if they sub-nuke you, all 40 of those stacks just go away. Just like that. So you have to build this up, and it does make a hell of a difference once it's maxed out. I've had this maxed out, and you could tell there's a huge difference. But as soon as you get sub-nuked, again, goes away. So... It'll work on tack and engineer players, but uh, just, you know, be mindful of that. Vanguard specialists. All right, so this goes towards our surgical strikes. A huge 33% cooldown to the base recharge time. Huge, huge. This is like, you need this. Uh, again, I mean, between our Intel team's cooling down temporal surge plus this trait, you are going to be hitting very, very hard. Uh, Shall We Not Revenge, I like this. This comes off the Klingon D7. Um, it is nice to have. Um, I, I'm i kind of impartial to this. Actually, I might change this out for something. But, you know, if you are getting hit, it is nice to reflect some of that stuff. You do have to watch because it is pre-resistance. That's the key word here, pre-resistance. Temporal Surge, so this ties in with all those intel abilities and everything. Plus, look at all that terminate in flight speed. Um, so, when you're proccing all your stuff, getting all the damage resist down, all that good stuff, you hit your surgical strikes, you hit this, and now you're moving. And now you can line up and put down some real, real big damage. Again, the, the cooldowns from the uh, intel abilities, it's just bar none. You're getting this every 15 or 20 seconds, pretty much. It's really nice. And... Oh god, Exodus. Yes, Exodus. Um, I want to change this out. I have a lot more traits on my other character that I would change this out for. But I think for now it will stay. Um, you know, Again, I'm not getting targeted a lot. You'll notice there wasn't a lot of healing consoles. Uh, I don't actively use whole image refractors. Like I, If I do, it was by accident. Um, it's more for the passive uh, bonus. So, really, it's just the protomatter matrix infusers and just staying cloaked. Again, we're trying to exploit the ever-loving god out of this game right now. Uh, space reps, uh, same as last time, I'm pretty sure. Uh, crit severity is nice to have. We love our crit severity. All hail crit severity. Uh, protomatter conduits, now pro feedback. Yeah, it's pretty much the same. I would say that pretty much these two on the end are a staple in all of my builds. Critical deflection, I mean, the description is there. It's really nice to have. Um, you know, somebody else running Temple Surge, you know, they're going to lose all, almost all their critical chance for five seconds. So, uh, Counter Strokes, a really good one. You know, you gain some crit severity uh, because a lot of people are running control. So, Anything we could do to boost our crit severity. I love love crit severity. Our duty officers. Let's go into them. Alright. Active. Alright. We have our con officer. Uh, Phoenix store. Get them. It's really nice to have. Again. Click on evasive maneuvers. Click on your emergency power to uh, engines. And boom. Four seconds later. You have evasive maneuvers again. Really good to have. Um, really expensive doff. I mean, you can actually get some of these doffs in drop boxes. These two, I think you can get in, um, doff assignments, but the drop rate is really, really low. Uh, 
this does run batteries, so I, I obviously want to uh, have a cooldown rate on those. All right, uh, Warp Core Engineer. I don't really like seeding doffs in with percent of chance. I mean, I find that I'd rather have active doffs. I mean, obviously, this is an active doff. Um, Swellza is an active doff. Um, but this chance is high enough, and it's once it does proc, it's definitely worth it. I mean, remove all debuffs. All debuffs. I mean, and again, we're running that emergency powered aux, so, you know, it's not a long cooldown. So this will proc fairly good. Our damage control engineer, probably one of the more expensive doffs in the game. Uh, I've seen this doff go from 600 mil to like 1.2 billion. You can get this doff in the Delta expansion pack in the Zen store, and that unlocks it for your entire account. But this is really nice. Again, anytime you click Aux to Sif, you're play gating. Done. And that's why it's a hard clicky for me. I am running two Borg Officer Doffs. Um, these are really nice. I'm running, you know, plenty of engineering um, Bridge Officer skills. Four of them, if memory serves. And Intel, four of those. So having duplicates of these, you know, essentially a 30% chance and a 60% chance for cooldowns. Um, again, you're cooling down. You are cooling down. Um, really nice to have. This one's a bit expensive. Um, you can get, I mean, you can probably wait it out again for around 90 mil EC, which is still, in my opinion, a bit expensive for a, just a doff. Um, but that's what works for me. Obviously, our ground setup does not change. My four additional uh, space duty officers these three nurses do apply to space you can seat them in ground and they apply directly to space very nice to have and our gem hadar 10 percent all damage on space or ground i think that pretty much covers it uh all right so i mean again flying it pretty much all you want to do first thing i do all right go up forceful inspection you wait the five seconds um, then you'll hit your sensor scan, you know, maybe pull them in closer, maybe hit your, uh, entanglement. And then all of a sudden you're hitting, uh, your surgical strikes, chemocyte, temporal surge, and yeah, just going to town on them. I hope this video, uh, helps somebody out there. If you found this informative at all, please like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I will see you guys next time.